I edged three times before starting this video. I want you to imagine the following. You think of any card in the deck. You have them shuffle the deck. They can mix up the deck to their heart's content. Now at this point, you take the cards back and you just, you just feel for the cards. And as you're feeling for the cards, you're revealing aspects and characteristics about their card. Finally, after dealing a couple of cards and having your hands just rubbed all over them, you come to one card. Finally, they name their card and you turn it over and it's exactly the five of spades. Immediately sex everywhere, gooning for hours, all because of a simple card trick. Now this trick makes use of two separate techniques that are taught in the Pick Cake Magic Academy, the home of over 1,500 videos going over cards of coins of everything you need to become the best magician could possibly be off for the low, low price of $5 a month. And I'm always uploading new content. As a matter of a fact, with this same exact technique, I'll be uploading a bonus video that's a little bit more of a mentalist-like spin. Very reminiscent of the works of people like Peter Turner. And I'll be uploading that as a bonus to the Pig Cake Magic Academy. So if you're a member, you get a nice little bonus to this trick. Now you do need a little bit of a setup for this trick. And the setup is a thick five of spades. This is simply done by taking two playing cards and sticking them together. That's all it is. All I've done is that I've taken just a little bit of repositional glue, repositionable glue, repositionable glue, repositionable glue, repositionable glue, repositionable glue. I've just taken a little bit of repositionable glue, repositionable glue, and just stuck the five of spades with another card. This card is gonna go on the bottom of the deck, ready for my favorite technique called the spread force. Now this is taught in the Pig Cake Magic Academy in excruciatingly virginal detail, however, for the sake of explanation, all you need is a pinky break right there below the five of spades. And we're gonna run through the cards like this and have the participant call stop at a point of their choosing. Now, when we notice the participant's lips start to move, we're just gonna push off all the cards above the break and point at the five of spades with my middle finger. You're gonna think it's a timing force, it's not. You're just worrying about when you feel them call stop and you're gonna push up all the cards, in this case, above your break and just point at the card and have them remember it. Now, because this is a force card, you could close up the pack, you could hand them the pack immediately and have them shuffle the cards to their heart's content. You could have them mix and shuffle these cards. There's no limitation because not only do you know what the card is, in this case, the five of spades, because of the thick boy card, you're gonna know where the card is. Now you could do this in a number of ways. The easiest way is you could just spread through the cards and just by feeling them, you're gonna be able to feel that extra thick card, in this case, the five of spades. What you could do in performance is because you know it's a force card, you could just deal through the cards and reveal certain characteristics about their card. This is very reminiscent to a trick by Darren Brown called Extreme Mental Effort. Now all I'm feeling for is that thick boy card. When I come to that thick boy card, I'm gonna know that that's their card. The only difficulty here is just timing it so that when you actually get to that thick boy card, you're gonna be able to reveal that card to the participant or at least the majority of that card. So you don't have to make this completely obvious. You're gonna know when that card comes across. In this case, here's a five of spades and you're gonna have a nice way of revealing their card and finding its location in the deck after they shuffled. It goes without saying that if you spread the cards after the participant has shuffled the deck and you feel that card somewhere near the top or somewhere near the bottom, you could cut it to a position that's more advantageous to the deal. So that way you're not having to deal through the entire deck or deal through just a couple cards in order to get your revelation. You're gonna have time to have banter with the participant as you're dealing the cards onto your professional stool and you get a nice revelation at that. As I mentioned before, you get access to a bonus video going over a similar technique, but using it as a drawing duplication or word revelation. Check out the Academy for that. <sighs> that was fun though, very easy to do. You could keep that card in the deck and now you have a key card. You could use that card to find other cards. You could use that card to find itself. But having a thick card in a deck is very useful. Almost as useful as having a thick uncle. I see you again when I see you.